Chairman, can you hear me okay? As the Chairman mentioned, the purpose of today's meeting of the two committees is to receive information regarding the projected impacts on electricity rates on the state's economy and on electric reliability resulting from the EPA's proposed rule that sets carbon pollution standards for existing power plants. Uh, the rule's uh, full name is the Carbon Pollution Emission Guidelines for Existing Stationary Sources for Electric Utility Generating Units, also known as the Clean Power Plan or the 111D rule. Let me briefly remind you how we got here. Going back to 2003, the EPA made a finding that Congress uh, never intended to regulate carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases under the Clean Air Act. Uh, and that the EPA lacked authority to do so. The EPA was then sued by a number of states, and the Supreme Court decided in Massachusetts versus EPA in 2007 that greenhouse gas emissions do come under the Clean Air Act's definition of an air pollutant, and the court ordered the EPA to determine whether greenhouse gas emissions endanger public health and the environment. So the EPA went back, came down with an endangerment finding in December of 2009, that sort of laid the groundwork for the EPA's proposed rule. Virginia and two other states uh, sued the EPA in 2010, uh, challenging the endangerment finding, but in 2012, the uh, D.C. Circuit uh, Court of Appeals uh, dismissed the challenge. So in 2013, the president uh, directed EPA to issue regulations of carbon pollution from existing plants. And in June of this year, the EPA proposed its rule, which I understand rules, runs 674 pages. Now, the proposed rule sets uh, emission guidelines for states to follow in developing plans to address greenhouse gas emissions from existing uh, electricity generating units. While you're here, you will hear a lot today about how the rule is intended to be applied and the potential impacts of the rule uh, let me mention that it's in, maybe important to note sort of the, the structure of the rule because this is not like a traditional, old-fashioned EPA rule where uh, if you're a power plant, you apply to EPA for a permit and they'll say, okay, we're going to require you to use certain control technologies and your emissions limit is X number of tons of whatever the pollutant is. This is not like that. It's um, under Section 111D of the Clean Air Act, which requires states uh, to develop uh, standards of performance for existing uh, stationary sources and an implementation plan to achieve these standards. And the standard of performance is defined as the degree of emission limitation achievable through the application of the best system of emission reduction. Now, the best system of emission reduction is critical to what's proposed. Uh, in this case, it involves a uh, four-building block approach that involves looking outside the fence line of generation facilities and looks at the entire uh, electric generating system. It then assigns each state uh, a target for reductions uh, by 2030 based on the EPA's determination of the state's capacity for reductions using these four building blocks, which are things like uh, increased plant efficiency, using more renewables or zero emission plants, uh, energy efficiency, and uh, using natural gas combined cycle plants. And we'll hear more about the four building blocks uh, later. But states would have flexibility to determine how to uh, achieve these target emission rates. So overall, the rule as it stands now, seeks to achieve a 30% reduction uh, from 2005 emission levels with that 30% cut to be achieved by 2030 uh, with interim targets along the way. So for each state, the percentage reduction required varies uh, from 72% in Washington state to 11% in North Dakota. For Virginia, the proposed requirement is to reduce CO2 emissions uh, by 38% by 2030. I'll note that only 15 states have a requirement for a, a greater percentage reduction, if I'm reading that correctly. And a word about timing, I think uh, Director Pale will talk more about this, but what we have now is a proposed rule. 
comments are still ongoing. There had been a, a deadline of October 15th for submitting comments to the APA regarding the rule. That's been extended to December 1st. Um, the EPA had been expected to finalize its proposed rule by mid-2015. So at this point, states are dealing with a proposed rule that's uh, in the development process through the, the federal regulatory process. Uh, based on comments that are submitted, EPA may uh, change the rules, so we won't know exactly what Virginia will be required to do until the rule is, is finalized and <coughs> what challenges stands after that. Turning to our agenda for today. The first speaker on the agenda is David Taylor, the director of the DEQ, who will provide more information about, about the proposed rule, including an overview of the, of the four building blocks. He will also address the comments that DEQ filed last Friday with the EPA on the proposed rule. Uh, so the idea is that uh, Director Taylor will sort of set the landscape by the ground basis familiarity with the rule. The um, following this appeal will be presentations by two groups who have prepared analysis of the proposed rule in conjunction with the Green Energy Plan. The code requires DMME to do updates quadrantally of the Green Energy Plan every October 1. Last session, the General Assembly enacted uh, House Bill 1261 then Delegate Chapin's bill and a counterpart uh, by Senator Carrick SB 615 that required the energy plan to include, with regard to any regulation proposed under uh, 111D, uh, an analysis of the costs and benefits for energy producers and uh, electricity consumers, uh, the effects on markets and reliability, and the uh, commercial availability of technology required to comply with them. Those uh, that Pursuant to that legislative directive, the energy plan, which was released October 1 of this year, includes two appendices to meet that uh, statutory directive. So the first, which is Appendix A1 to the energy plan, uh, is prepared by the Virginia Center for Cold Energy Research. Uh, a copy of it's been uh, set out at your desk, but it's available online as part of the Virginia Energy Plan. Uh, two representatives from the Virginia Center for Coal Energy Research who worked on that report are with us today. Dr. Michael Karmas, the director of the Center uh, of Virginia Center for Energy Research, and the Stony Bar professor at the Department of uh, Mining and Minerals Engineering at Virginia Tech, and Dr. John Cranon, uh, director of environmental programs at the Virginia Center, uh, will present their analysis. The second analysis that was attached to the energy plan, and again, a copy of it is included there, is the uh, uh, report prepared by ICF International under contract with the Southern Environmental Law Center on the impact of the uh, clean power plant. Uh, Carol Jaffe from the Southern Environmental Law Center uh, uh, was involved with that and uh, will uh, discuss that today. As I mentioned earlier, the EPA is still accepting comments uh, from interested persons on the proposed rule. Uh, one set of comments that was filed uh, by the staff and the Corporation Commission in October. Uh, Cody Walker, the Assistant Director of the Commission's Division of Energy Regulation, uh, will present the SEC's comments uh, on this topic. And a copy of uh, his comments were also provided for the members. Six other presentations are on the agenda today. They represent the perspectives of energy providers and electricity consumers. With regard to providers, uh, the first speaker is Michael Cormos, the Executive Vice President of Operations at PJM Interconnection. Mr. Cormos is available for all services that touch reliability at PJM, including system operations, planning information, and technology services. Uh, PJM is the regional transmission organization that coordinates the movement of wholesale electricity in all other parts of 13 states and, and D.C., including uh, parts of Virginia. Uh, following uh, Mr. Cormos, uh, we're scheduled to hear from three Virginia electric utilities. Uh, Bob Blue will provide some perspective of Dominion. Uh, John McManus, uh, Vice President of Environmental Services at AEP, will uh, represent uh, 
uh, Lenchen's perspective on the issue, and uh, former Senator Jack Reeser uh, will uh, provide the perspective of Virginia's uh, electric cooperatives. Finally, we're scheduled here in two groups that represent consumers' le electricity in Virginia. Um, the first uh, is uh, Ed Petrini, who represents the Virginia Committee for Fair Utility Rates and the Old Dominion Committee for Fair Utility Rates, which are uh, groups that represent the interests of industrial customers in the Dominion and the service territories. The last scheduled speaker will be Meet Browder, Senior Assistant Attorney General for the Division of Consumer Counsel at the Office of the Attorney General, uh, which group is responsible for representing the interests of Virginia consumers uh, in uh, regulatory matters. And the last scheduled item on the agenda is a public comment period during which interested persons may share their thoughts regarding the impacts of the Clean Power Plan on uh, rights for liability and the state's economy. If there are no questions about the agenda, I will. Brian, thank you very much. Are there any questions, uh, Mr. Munyon, by the members of the committee?